in this video, I'm going to talk about preliminary calculations, computing effect sizes and their variances, and finding a common effect size. So before you analyze your data with metaphor, you've got to get it in shape so the program can accept it. And when you uh, do your meta-analysis, you confront the problem of missing data squarely. So no matter what kind of analysis you're doing, what your topic is, you almost certainly are going to find articles that don't have the information that you want in them. So for example, suppose you wanted to compare men and women on math anxiety. You will go to the literature and you find um, tons of studies, but they report different things. And what you'd like to see uh, is a mean, a standard deviation, and a sample size for each group. And that way, you can compute a standardized mean difference, um, either D or G, and the appropriate sampling variance, variance of D or the variance of G. So um, that's what you want to see, mean, standard deviation, sample size for each group. But they don't always report that. Some of them just have a t-test and degrees of freedom. So they tell you that there's a significant difference in favor of males or in favor of females. Some of them just uh, uh, report the number of each group and they give you a value of D. Some of them report the correlation between sex and anxiety and the total sample size. They don't tell you how many men and women there are. They don't tell you what D is. They just give you a correlation. Um, maybe uh, you'll find the D in a confidence interval from some uh, other meta-analysis and that's all that you've got. It's a D in a confidence interval. What you, what you, you want to do is convert all of that so you have one effect size, in this case it would probably be D, and a variance for each of those things. Um, you need the common effect size, you need the uh, variance from whatever information is given, and I'm going to show you how to do that in Excel, and I'll show you how to do that in R. I'm not going to um, show every possible combination and every conceivable piece of missing data and so forth. Uh, once you get the general idea, you should be able to uh, to um, to do this yourself. Okay, so example data set. I made up some data to show you what I mean. I'm going to illustrate in Excel. I'm going to illustrate in R. And the, 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 the actual examples, the, the code lines and all that, are going to be on my website, which you saw in the very first video. So let's look at Excel. All right, sheet one. Okay, so... Um, just for fun, I've got four studies here. First study has, um, you know, the, say, males and females and a value of D of 0.7, and suppose it's in the favor of uh, females having less anxiety. I know it's probably wrong, but it doesn't matter for the sake of illustration. There's, there's no correlation computed or, or shown in this article. It doesn't have confidence intervals. I want the value of D, which in this case will be 0.7, and I want the variance of that thing, which I can figure if I know the sample sizes and the value of D. How do I know that? Because I have this handy formula right here, which says I need the two sample sizes and the value of D, and if I use this equation, I can find that value. So we're good on the first, on the first uh, study. Second study has the same information, so we're good on the second study. Third study has a value of D and it has a confidence interval. So I've got the value of D here, so for Y, but I need to compute the variance from this confidence interval. And I can do that because I have this um, little handy formula right here that'll let me compute the variance. And lastly, I have 120 people who um, we got a correlation of 0.3 here, and uh, it's missing all else. So now I've got to find a value of D and the variance of that thing. And so here's a formula for um, D. I can find that from the correlation. And now the sampling variance of the correlation I can find with R and the total sample size. And then I can plug that into the um, final formula that gives, converts the variance of R into the variance of D. And then I'll have all the things that I want to know. The question is now, how do you actually compute that? Well, in Excel, you, um, you you just write a, a formula like this. It's <laughs> you know four times the uh, variance of R uh, divided by one over R 
squared to the third, and you plug that formula in, um, you've got formulas here for these. You, each one, you just take these um, the formula. You've got the the two uh, confidence interval uh, endpoints, and you find a width, and you divide that by two times one point nine six, and you square that thing. You get that's that's the variance. Okay, so that's how you would do that, and that's the general idea of how you would do that in uh, Excel. And I've now got the data set that you would have in Excel if you had left blank all the places where you don't have information and you just plugged in the data that you do. So I'm going to now take this and upload it to R and then um, do the same kind of thing in R. So let's minimize this. Okay, let's call up R. And um, one of the nice things about R is that you can write these files of commands and then execute them. So you don't have to write each and everything in there if you want to do this again. Um, so I'm going to edit, execute, and now it's um, executing the file. Now I'm going to, when it's done, I'm going to go to the beginning and show you what it's doing. Okay, so I woke R up, and here it is. And now I've got these functions. So this one says calculate the variance of D from D. So that's the name of this function. And here's what goes into the function. It's got um, N1, N2, and D. That's the arguments, the things that it needs that you will supply later. And here's how you compute the function. So the first part is N1 plus N2 divided by N1 times N2. And if we recall our... Um, Excel file, there's N1 plus N2 over N1 times N2, so that's the first part. Second part is D squared divided by 2 times N1 plus N2. So in the second part, you've got D squared divided by 2 times N1 plus N2. Add the two things together. That calculates the variance of D from information about D. If you've got D in the two groups, sample sizes. And um, so this uh, format, you know, calculate D from R, calculate the variance of R from R, and so forth. So there's a series of these functions that you can um, create that will then um, solve your preliminary computing problems. And these are just the same, the same formulas as what I put into Excel. But if you prefer to do it in R, then this sort of thing will do it for you. So then I wake up. Metaphor and XLSS because that's how I like to read in data. And I'm going to call this effect size for sheet 3, which is read this XLSX file. Um, this is the name of that XLSX file. And uh, we want sheet index of 3, so that's the third sheet on this Excel file. And that's just the data that's, that's all the uh, missing pieces. And uh, um, I also said options digits three, so when I've got data or output, I want no more than um, three digits. Um, here's my four studies. Notice that I've got um, NAs for the missing data. Um, total N is only for the um, one with a correlation that's missing for everything else. First two studies have the number of people in each group and the observed value of D. Third study has D and a confidence interval. So those are the bits of information we have in here. So now we want to um, calculate D and the variance of D. So that's going to be our thing to analyze. So um, uh, for the first one, we're going to say um, variance of D in effect size 3. So this is the data set, ES3. And dollar sign means uh, an, el uh, an element, so this vector, this VD, is going to get effect size 3, calculate the variance in D from D, and I've got the number experimental, number control, and D as my substitute arguments here, and uh, I've also got, um, well, all right, when I do that, I get um, the variance of D here, because number experimental, number control, and D are non-missing in the first two rows. And there's at least one of those things missing in the rest of the row, so um, the result is missing here. Uh, I also say um, for YD, this D, 
put in whatever you saw in D. So uh, for three of the um, four rows, I've now got a value of my um, dependent variable here, my effect size, and this one's still missing because that just has a value of R. So next, um, for rows three and four, so if I want rows three and four, I, I've got um, the data set, I've got this variable, and then now I'm just looking at rows, oops, I'm sorry, this variable, and now I've just got these two rows. Um, calculate the variance of D from the 95% confidence interval. So it goes and it does that, and it puts it in here. And um, the last row is still missing, even though I told it to use it for both rows, and that's because confidence interval is missing for the last row. Okay, so I've got everything now that I want except for I need the values here. So I need to, um, for the fourth row in the variance, I need to uh, calculate the uh, variance from R. I've got the value of R here. And I need the arguments R and the total number of people, which I've got. And then for the value of Y, uh, I've got to calculate D from R. So I use that function there. And then I print them out, and now I've got Y, D, and the variance, the, just D, that's going to be my Y, my, my input to uh, metaphor. And here's the variance of D. And if we look back at our uh, Excel, you'll see that we've got the same values. <laughs> so here we go. 629 and 0369. So we've got the same values of uh, the effect size and the variance of the effect size, whether we use Excel or we use R.